Welcome back, let's play Metal Gear Solid 2. We've just taken down Vamp, who we find out was just lying in wait, come, waiting for us to come and rescue Emma Emmerich. We've taken care of him, and now we have an opportunity to go and get a hold of Emma. The problem is, well, she is on the other side of a bunch of flooded corridors here. So we gotta go and swim through here. And we were informed some rather unfortunate information that Emma is in fact afraid of water. That's a problem. <laughs> How are we gonna get her out of here if she's not willing to swim? Well, here's the way we need to go. And she's right through here. Get our map, of course. I have a... an idea. Let's shoot these lockers. Wait, what was that? Haha, <laughs> this locker makes noises. You don't think she's hiding in there, do you? Lockers must be genetic. Wait, hold on. Alakon and Emma aren't blood relatives. Ah, eh, never mind. Are you alright? Who are you? Raiden, I'm getting you out of here. Get me out? You're lying. Where are you taking me this time? What are you talking about? I'm here to help. Here. I'll prove it. Do you have nanos? What? Well, do you? I do. Everybody on this project has them. Okay, good. Let's try. Ah, uh, here we go with this shit again. Can you hear me now? Nano communication? That's right. I have nano machines too. Then you're not one of them. That's what I've been trying to tell you. And you came to rescue me? Actually, I need your help to stop Arsenal. I understand you're the only one who might be able to do it. And who told you that? The President. Really? I need you to come with me to Shell One. Your brother's waiting for you there. My brother? Come on! We have to get moving! This place will be flooded soon! Swim. You used to love it. How do you know? Your brother told me. He's really here? That's right. He's here to rescue you. I don't believe you. He would never come for me. And I'm telling you he's here, waiting for us at Shell One. No! He left me, my mother, when we needed him the most. When my father died, all he could think about was himself. Emma, we can go over all that later. But first, we have to get out of here. No! I hate water! It's hopeless! I can't swim! I can't swim! You can do it! I can't! Come on, deep down inside, you know you can swim! I can't keep my eyes open in the water. It's endless blue. The water, it, it wants me. It won't let me go. All right, then close your eyes. I'll guide you. I, I, I was injected with something. My, my legs. I have trouble moving them. Listen, Emma, just hold your breath. I'll do the rest. First, we'll head to Filter Chamber 2. Then we'll take a break. And all I have to do is hold my breath? That's right. How long? Just a little while. Are you sure? Of course I'm sure. That's how I got here. I, I don't think I can do it. I'm not good at holding my breath. Look, Emma, I have an idea. 
Put your ear against my chest and listen to my heartbeat. Your heartbeat? Count the beats. Don't think about anything else. When you reach 100, open your eyes. By that time, we'll be on the other side. Give me a signal if you think you're running out of breath. What will you do then? I'll swim faster. Hang on tight. Okay, let's go. I'm closing my eyes. Take some deep breaths. One, two, three. Wait! What is it? Uh, let me take off my glasses. You know, you should wear contacts. There's nothing wrong with my eyes. Hmm? I wear them for show. Trying to be different from the other girls? No, it's not like that. I like glasses. And there's this guy I like to used to wear them. Your first boyfriend? No. Somebody more important. Anyway, they bring me luck. I see. Okay, let's go. Well, there we go. We've gotten Emma and we gotta go swim back. She's just gonna hold on to the ride's back. Somehow he listened to his heartbeat through his neck. I don't know how she plans on doing that. But we gotta swim pretty fast here because she has her own O2 gauge and it's little more than twice as long, or twice as, I'm sorry, a little more than half as much as Raiden's. So we're gonna have to swim faster. She also has a shorter health bar, so we gotta watch out for running into these mines as well. So you should really use every opportunity you can to uh, surface and allow them to to breathe. She is tiny. Oh yeah, here's something fun you can do. Ah! And no one will give you a shit for it either. You can shoot, I mean, as long as you don't actually shoot her with a regular gun or anything. I mean, that'll be fine to pop her with a tranquilizer dart. And of course we have the heartbeat. The reason why I did that is because for some reason I thought she said things in her sleep they could only hear with the microphone. Raiden, take Emma and go to strut L. There's a ladder down onto the oil fence on the ocean surface from that strut. You're not going to give me crap for, uh... shooting Emma? Raiden, take Emma to the computer room on B2 of Shell 1's core. She can launch the virus that you receive from the President. It's the only way to stop Arsenal gear. Is it a the flooding is getting worse. Go back to filter chamber number two where Vamp was, before the area is completely underwater. Move! Is it okay if she's unconscious while I do this? Jack, do you need to save? Yeah, why not? Um, Jack, about trying to break into your room. You're a bitch, Rose, I know. just forget about it. No, listen to me. I said I did it because I was worried about you, but it wasn't just that. What? I was suspicious. I thought there might be someone else. Someone else? Another woman. Rose. I really thought so, because sometimes you're so horribly cold. You know I wouldn't. I'm serious. Sometimes I feel like you're pushing me away, so I... Did you get in? Yeah. Are you satisfied now? There wasn't anyone there, was there? No. No, there was no one there. There was absolutely no one in your room. Not another woman, not me, not even you. Rose. I'm sorry. I just wanted to apologize, that's all. Talk to you later. When you're trying to wake up one of these unconscious characters, you can use the coolant spray to do it. And that wakes them up pretty quickly. Probably she doesn't give him any crap for, you know, shooting her. Cutscene time. Ah, 
Now let's rest. It's not like the place is flooding or anything like that. And Arsenal gear isn't about to go erupting out of the frickin' bay, is it? You did good. I concentrated on your heartbeat. It reminded me of when I was a kid. I remember my brother giving me a piggyback ride. I was sleeping with my ear against his back. I could hear his heartbeat. Sounds like you were close. We were, back then. We were stepchildren in our parents' second marriages. Wherever my brother went, I used to tag along. My brother didn't have any close friends, so he used to take care of me. We both wanted to be loved so much. So much that we used to pretend. Pretend? Yeah, we used to play house. My brother was the husband and I was the wife. But it was always just make-believe. We were only kids. You know what I mean. I never had a family, but I think I know what you mean. Raiden, what's your status? Colonel? I've got Emma Emmerich here. We've managed to avoid drowning. Good job. Get her over to Shell 1 as soon as you can. That's going to be hard with the connecting bridge on the upper level destroyed. Didn't Olga say something about taking the oil fence at the bottom of Strut L? Yeah, I remember that. You should be able to go down by way of Strut L. Try and get over there. What about Emma? She's been injected with something and she can't walk without any help. Take her with you. Free your hands of any equipment and hold down the action button to give her a hand. To release your grip on her, take your finger off the action button. Emma can sit and wait until you help her back up. And be careful. You won't be able to use any weapons while you're leading her. Now head for Strut L. We're on our way. Raiden, we've infiltrated the computer room. What's your situation? Emma's safe. We're heading your way. <sighs> Good job. Shell 1's deserted. Looks like everybody's aboard Arsenal. I had a look at the system, but there's nothing I can do. EE's our only hope. Right. I'll put her on then. Huh? EE? -E? How? I'll use my Kodak as a relay. Uh, <clears throat> Here she is. Uh, how? Uh, EE, -E, is that you? How? EE. -E. Um, why are you involved with Metal Gear? Huh? You knew our family's dark history and still got involved? What's wrong with you? I should have known. Answer me. Why are you repeating the same mistake? I... I wanted to hurt you. I wanted to see you suffer. E.E.? -E? You abandoned me. No, that's not what happened. All right. That's enough. Oh. Who are you? I'm a friend of Otacon's, Emma. Otacon? Enough with the sibling rivalry. That's not what this is. We haven't got time for this. Raiden, get her over here right now. I... I... Gotcha, Snake. I'll head over there with Emma. Most of the enemies aboard Arsenal, but I suggest you be careful. Make sure Emma gets here in one piece. Raiden, take care of my sister. Don't worry. I'll get her there. I'm gonna stick around for a little bit of time and run through a few codec conversations that I think are sort of not terribly important, but useful for... Press down and hold the action button near Emma okay, not to this hold one. her hand. This is Start just a gameplay with the button pressed down conversation. And you can lead her by the hand. Push the action button again to let go. But, um, calling Snake an Otacon. A lot of interesting conversations come out of that. Okay, Raiden, let me talk to Emma. Sure, one condition. No arguing. No problem. Put her on. E.E., -E, is that you? Yes. What do you want? Why did you get involved in weapons development? A lot of people will get hurt. Even more will die. I'm talking about the destruction of homes and cities, radioactive contamination for years to come. You, of all people, should know the horror of nuclear weapons. You know about our family's dark history. Why, E.E., -E, why? You left me. 
You made my life a living hell. I didn't have a choice. Don't lie to me. The pool, you could never look me in the eye after the accident. You took the easy way out so you wouldn't have to face me. That way you could avoid responsibility every day. You ran. You ran away so you wouldn't have to face the pain. No, that's not why I left. You left me and took the easy way out. That's not true. I left the house because... You're a criminal, just like me. A criminal? I know what you did. You manipulated our account on the network. But... Look at what you're doing now. You're nothing but a cracker. No, I'm just applying my knowledge for the cause. The cause? What cause? Justice? For peace, E.E. E. I'm not like Snake. I, I can't carry a gun and face the enemy. That's why I do what I do best. Oh, right. Nice justification, Hal. Forget about being a criminal. You'd make a great lawyer. All right already. That's enough. What's up, Raiden? Uh... Out of my way. Let me talk. You want to talk to Otacon? Yes. I'll put him on. Yeah? What is it? Up to now, scientists have continued to be active participants in war. What's your opinion? There's no doubt that war has been an ideal event that fuels the progress of science. But therein lies the trap. We scientists must establish some form of work ethic. It's a tragedy that both the government and the military act as sponsors to modern science. What are you talking about? The atom and hydrogen bombs were born from laboratories owned and operated by universities and private enterprises. Los Alamos and the Lawrence Livermore Labs were run by universities. There's nothing strange about that. Weapons development and universities. This may come as a surprise, but science requires that information be exchanged freely. You're referring to the will of Professor Oppenheimer, aren't you? For me, science and weapons always existed at different levels. I never thought that my research results would bring about misfortune to others. That was until the Shadow Moses incident. I have no regrets. That's where you're wrong. We scientists know the dangers of a nuclear threat. It's up to us to protect the people. We can't allow it to be exploited by nations or their politics. Man and nuclear weapons cannot coexist. Mere mortals were never meant to handle nuclear fusion. Science defines me. My government respects me. Can you tell me what's wrong with that? Can you? Okay, that's enough. The rumors about Big Shell being a big cover-up are all true. Otacon? I had Snake check everything out. Sure, there's some facilities to clean up the pollution, but they're not running at full capacity. Don't you think it's funny that even though two years have gone by since the incident, they haven't managed to clean up all the crude oil? Of course, the media doesn't report that kind of thing. I think they're having fresh shipments of crude oil brought in to replace the stuff they've cleaned up. The story you were told about toxic chemicals being released if the plant were blown up also seems pretty fishy. I don't think it's actually true. Information is being suppressed on a huge scale. These guys seem to think that the new Metal Gear is worth all the effort and money they're spending on it. So I've been lied to all along. No, I think even your CO didn't know what was going on. And that's probably what he's been telling you. I didn't mean by the Colonel. I meant by you. Huh? We never lied to you. We just didn't tell you everything, that's all. <laughs> you know, you're a pretty interesting guy. You're just like Snake said. What did he say? That you're a weak, simple-minded, stubborn fool. A, a weak, simple-minded... Ah, oh, don't worry. He didn't mean anything bad by it. Nothing bad? Well, what could possibly be worse than that? That lying, useless, backstabbing, mincing son of a... Raiden, I'm his friend. I know him better than anyone else. I know he's not that kind of guy. Yeah, so what? And, uh, by the way, there's one more thing you should probably know about Snake. What? He's right here. Next to you? Yep. Did he hear... Every word. I'm... I'm just gonna get back to the mission now. I did a quick inspection. Arsenal Gear's security system is similar to the antibiotic function of a living creature's immune system. Surveillance of the inner system is handled by periodic scans using a number of agents with the capacity for detecting data that doesn't belong in the system. Once the agents detect any invading data, the information is passed on to an antibody production system. 
From there, a program referred to as an antibody agent is autonomously produced to neutralize or eliminate the invading data. Added to that, there's a solid barrier existing between GW's optic neural net, its physical and logical base, and the other general nets. Referred to as the bit-brain barrier, this wall is a filtering system for preventing the infiltration of foreign data. This security system makes it very difficult to attack the system from the outside. I'm afraid nothing can be done without sufficient preparation. Shoot a fire extinguisher in the contents. Ah, uh, we've seen this before. Now the reason the the, um, the relationship between Hal and Emma is a little weird because they're not actually brother and sister. They're stepbrother and sister. Adakan's father, I think his name was Huey. Oh damn it! Look like a hurt. Uh, Hal's father married Emma's mother. I think her name was Julie. And the two of them were like inseparable. Hal didn't have any friends and. Emma had a crush on Hal, it was sort of weird. Something ended up happening, and Emma almost drowned in the family pool, where Hal's father ended up actually drowning. He died. Emma ended up surviving, but she had thought that, like, ooh, Hal come rescue me, and it didn't happen. So she felt he betrayed her. And he was unwilling to face her after that event. So he just left and stopped talking to them. So she felt even more betrayed. So it's this whole messy situation. Oh, here we go. This is the big one. Emma, Snake and Hal are waiting for us in Shell One's computer room. I've got this disc that the president gave me. This disc is supposed to contain a virus that can corrupt Arsenal Gear's operating system. We need you to. This is. This is my program. What? Why did the president give it to you? Huh? Did something happen to the president? The president. He's dead. What? You actually wrote this virus? It's not really a virus. It's more like a worm cluster. It's actually a delayed effect autonomous program that's designed to invade GW's cerebrum and render its nerve connections useless. You know what GW is? Of course. I created it. Huh? You look surprised. Uh, well... Cat got your tongue? I'm sorry, I... How about the Patriots? Ever heard of them? Yes, but I only know what I've been told. Can you tell me what you know? Um, sure, but it's hard to put into words. Right. Are you reading me, Emma? Yes, loud and clear. The president said that arsenal gear was the Patriot's key to supremacy. That's as good a description as any. What exactly is it? It's a massive data processing system capable of controlling information on a global scale. A data processing system? That's right. The system's a social device for maintaining the Patriot's control. You've lost me. Well, in this day and age, information emerges from every direction and is freely distributed. A variety of information gathered by servers employing the latest in high-speed communication networks and P2P technology is rapidly circulated to individuals. In fact, the speed of this circulation process is accelerating on an almost daily basis. The Patriots seem to be afraid of this development. Apparently, they believe that their role will shift from dominant to dominated. Huh? But let me give you an example. You're aware of Solid Snake's anti-Metal Gear activities, aren't you? Yeah, I know a little about it. Well, that's just a small sample of uncontrolled information. I can guarantee you the Patriots did not want Solid Snake's name publicized. Now, look at it like this. Political scandal, corporate corruption, up until now, the Patriots have managed to keep a lid on these and other self-serving events. But with their existing data processing system, they're no longer able to effectively control the flow of information generated at the individual level. With the newly created system, they can fully regulate digital information. High-level information can be categorized in stages, given clearance levels, and deleted as necessary, never to be seen by the public. By deleting such information, the Patriots can shape the course of history as they see fit. Somebody's bound to catch on. No, the memory capacity, not to mention the lifespan of the average individual, is extremely limited. 
On the other hand, digital information lasts virtually forever. It doesn't deteriorate. So? The alphabet. 26 letters, right? It could have been 30 letters. What if the four deleted letters were controlled by a program? Impossible. It's not. In fact, something similar is already underway. Do you know how many genes exist in an individual? About 30 to 40,000? Right. That's what was announced at the turn of the century. But there's actually 100,000 according to the original theory advanced by the scientific community. Information regarding the remaining 60,000 was suppressed by the Patriots. No. Why? How would you know? Do you know what a gene looks like? Did you count them yourself? There are research organizations. Of course. And their reports have already been subtly altered. They're even beginning to believe the doctored reports. GW is a system that allows the Patriots to decide what will be recorded in tomorrow's history. So what we're talking about is one huge censorship system for deleting information which might be inconvenient to the Patriots. Exactly. The actual physical core for handling the task, GW, is installed in Arsenal. It's the only system in the world with an optic neural AI that has a parallel processing capacity of 980 trillion hammets. I suppose that being a specialist in neural AI and complex logic played a significant role in your association with the Metal Gear project. That's not the only reason. What do you mean? Huh. I guess there are plenty of other reasons. Yes, there are. I understand. Do you? So Arsenal Gear was actually designed to protect the GW system, wasn't it? Um, yes. It's armed with everything, including nuclear weapons, and is fully equipped with cyber-terrorist countermeasures. Physically and logically, it's the ultimate fortress for housing GW. But is the AI actually capable of controlling everything? No. GW is only the system's core. It's only for deciding what data is stored or deleted. The actual subsystem for executing the task exists within our social structure. What? Do you remember the panic that gripped the computer industry prior to the end of the century? You mean the Y2K problem? That's right. If you recall, our government supplied the world with a countermeasure program using the internet at full capacity. The program was distributed to every governmental organization, every key facility throughout the world. In addition, the same program was included in an OS application for distribution among the public. Let me guess. The Y2K countermeasure contained a program designed by the Patriots. Yes, and everything supplied from that day onward contains the same program. Impossible. Do you know how a computer operates? Do you really know the basic principles on how data is exchanged? Uh... Nobody's aware of it, but there's a subsystem in place, and it's about to be activated. Is that why Solidus wants to burn out every electrical circuit in Manhattan with a nuclear blast? Probably, but the overall system isn't actually complete. What? It still lacks the necessary factors for judging situations. I heard they were planning a major experiment in the next few days to provide complex data for GW to study. And suddenly all this happens. Emma, it's not your fault. If it wasn't for the terrorists... Yeah, you're right. Well, I think that's about all I know. Right. Uh, thanks. I think we'd better head for the computer room. <sighs> My bird in the computer room! Is he safe? That noisy overgrown parakeet? Excuse me, he's a parrot. And he's my best friend. My only friend. Well, the bird's okay. Good. Did you know that in the old days, miners used to take a canary into the mine shafts to detect toxic gas? That's what he's for? No. I really needed someone to talk to. Right. I think we'd better get moving. We've got a little longer to cover than the last time. I'll give it my best. Whatever you do, don't open your eyes. Why not? A dead body, not a pretty sight. Oh. Once we get past it, it'll be too dark to see anything. What are those sticks in your head? These? They're lacquered chopsticks. They hold your hair in place. Did you know that they're pretty popular in Europe and South America? Can't say that I do. You're not only cute, but smart too. Oh, I'm much more than cute. Okay, let's go. Well, okay.
this method, this uh, episode's going to get too long, so I'm going to have to end it here. But we'll have plenty to go on with in the next episode as we swim through the corridors back to the Shell 2 core.